Hello there viewers, good day to you and welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I know, I am super glad to be here. This is a 2016 Jeep Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. It's another fine Chrysler Automotive product. It's got the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. Customer states, large engine oil leaks everywhere. I guess it just drips oil all over the guy's driveway. Now, I don't see any driveway drippings here because we have a gravel driveway, but we have a lift inside. So let's hop in, fire this thing back up. We'll bring it inside, get it on the lift, and see exactly what uh, what the ailment is on this particular engine at 147,558 miles on the odometer starting the engine Rot row money lights on look at that check engine light we got a tire pressure warning light flashing at us we have no tpms signal on our indicator so we already got a couple problems here all of which are not oil related but we'll address those as well. At least I'll take a look into them and see what my uh, my consumer would like to do about said situation. So let's go ahead and get this thing into the shop. We'll rack it up, take a look down below, see where all this oil is coming from, and then uh, we will make uh, the appropriate decisions from that point forward. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Pulling in, winders down. Let's see, there's my wheel, there's my lift arm, wheel and lift arm. I think we're about good here on our lift point. I'll take that. Parking the auto, powering down. So what's up with these uh, these Jeep ducks here? I don't, I'm not comprehending. I see these ducks all over Jeeps everywhere. Like they're driving down the road. And there's like hundreds of ducks just kind of hanging out on the dash. Hello. Must be some kind of a Jeep thing. I'll never understand until I fix my Jeep outside. All right, let's see what we've got going on down here under the bonnet. Oh yeah, 3.6 Panastar Jeep engine. Okay, so I would like to engage service mode in this Jeep right here so we can get some, uh, some better lighting and better view inside of this. So we've got service mode stage one and then Jeeps come with a specialized stage two service mode. Now in order to do this, we have to employ some blue towel up here on the windshield. Yeah, right there, that's gonna protect the paint. So now what we do is we take it out of service mode one, put the prop rod down, and we can take the whole hood assembly and just lean it right back. There you go, look at that. Service mode two is engaged and now we have full access to our Pentastar. You see, the engineers were well aware we were gonna spend a lot of time inside this engine compartment, so they made access quite easy for us. Let's take a look here and see if we can't see any oil uh, leaking around. And, well, I spy off my little eye. There's some, there's some oil leaking out right down there. See that corner near that valve cover? There's oil leaking right there. So that's something going on. You can see where the cover is, that, that black right there with the bolt. You see that uh, drip of oil right there below the bolt. And if we look maybe a little higher up on the cover, you can also see a bunch of oil saturation around that piece of foam and on top of the cover. So right off the bat, I can tell there's a valve cover gasket leaking. Let's check this other side over here. This one, yeah, look here. Out back right there, there's a bunch of oil on that PCV tube. This may have a leaking cover. Uh, so the Achilles heel on these engines, as we are all well aware of, is this engine oil cooler assembly down here inside of the intake manifold valley. I uh, can't really see much down there. There is an intake in the way. Let's go ahead and rack this up, lift it up, take a look from down below and see how much oil is dripping out of this unit. Moving on up. Caution, service mode may interfere with the lift arm. <laughs> Exercising extreme caution. <laughs> what we don't want to do is smash the hood and the roof on the ceiling. 
Okay, going in down below. Let's see, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. A lot of oil leaking out of this thing. Look at that, there's a bunch, there's a bunch. Transmission's covered in it. It's dripping off the lines, off the oil pan. It's dripping off the starter. And it's coming from way up there. Way, way up there. Yeah, I see that drip right there in the corner. Let's check this other corner. Yep, I see more dripping over there. But this could also be deceiving. I'm not entirely convinced that that plastic uh, engine oil cooler assembly is not leaking. So here's what we know. We know that the valve covers have a leak, right? Now in order to get the valve covers, we need to take the intake manifold off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this up as a valve cover job pending. That's broken. Yeah, we're gonna write this up as a valve cover job pending the uh, inspection of the engine oil cooler assembly. So we're gonna pull that intake off, take a look at the cooler. If the intake manifold valley is full of oil, then that's gonna confirm that the cooler is leaking. If it's not full of oil, or if it appears that the oil is just running into the valley from the valve covers, then we will not do the cooler. Uh, we're trying to keep some costs down. Uh, I would advise doing the coolers on these because I do believe that upgrading these units to the, uh, the metal version is the better, better solution for this problem. But that's on the customer, not me. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're gonna need an eight mil. We're gonna need a screwdriver. We're gonna need a 10 mil, probably some 12s. Yeah, let's get after it. Okay, the best place to start is always the beginning. So let's pull the uh, intake tube off. Oh, look, I found another error in installation. Look, there's a tube that I found hanging out down here. That's supposed to plug in right here. Somebody did not do a good job. So I need to make sure. I, I have a sneaky suspicion that that, uh, that cooler has recently been replaced. And I believe so because of the condition of the plastic. And if we look very closely at some of these fasteners, we're going to find there are witness marks on the bolts. There's some down there on, uh, on that one. There's some there on this one, missing bolts here. Tubes not plugged in over here. So I think this might end up being a botched job recovery. Somebody else hated their job so much, I get to do it twice. Yeah, look, that's not even, uh, oh, come on, guys, look. This is supposed to be bolted on, and they broke it off right here. Look at that. That's also not okay. Recommend new engine. I think my guy is going to be slightly disappointed with the quality of work that I'm discovering on this vehicle. I'm going to be even more disappointed if I find out that uh, someone had already made an attempt to seal up these uh these valve covers intake air temperature sensor become disconnected there we go so in theory since all these uh fasteners weren't installed correctly that means this should be a nice easy gravy job right and i said the words you never ever ever call something out as easy in the beginning it's it's just bad car karma you get yourself in a, in a pickle doing that kind of thing. But I, I also seem to have like this habit of doing that. My big mouth gets me in trouble more often than not. To tell you the truth. That's how I got here to begin with. In my shop. My big mouth. I run my mouth and people don't like the things that are said. Kind of like YouTube. You say something. People are like, oh, you can't say that. Okay, so in classic Chrysler fashion, we have some nuts on some studs holding a bracket. So we're gonna unbracket this. So ideally, you'd like to just take a, uh, a Torx bit and unscrew these studs to free the manifold up from the bracket. But on these Chryslers, you can't do that because there's like a washer or a base plate on the stud behind it. So if you go to unscrew the stud from the plastic, it'll just push against the, uh, the bracket here because the stud cannot pass through the hole. So because of that, we've got to unbolt it 
in its other locations, which are kind of harder to get to there under the throttle body. Come around over here. You see them down there by that coolant hose. With that one and that one. And that's going to remove this bracket. I'll show you those silly little washer business things on the studs in a second. Get that out of here. Yeah, looky right there. See the studs? They've got a flat on the stud so the stud can't pass through the hole. Okay, we've got a vacuum booster line. That's right here in the way. Let's pull. Yeah, I think we'll just disconnect the booster. Just pull the check valve out with it. There we go. Disconnect this guy from that bracket right there. We'll pull it back. And there's two more tens on the manifold. Let's get those guys loose. It's stuck. Okay, so way down at the bottom of this bracket, there's two more studs with uh, what feels like some 13s on there. So we'll take these guys loose. I'm thinking if I take them loose enough, I can just lay this bracket back towards us and I won't have to pull those studs out all the way. Second one here. That's kind of tight. Yep, now that bracket's starting to flop around. Good. Yeah. Take it loose. There we go. That's enough. There we go. That's enough out of that bracket where I can clear the studs. Good. Okay, let's go to the passenger side and get some more hoses and whatnot disconnected here. This one, I don't even know where that one goes, down there. This is a PCV hose going back to the valve cover. Let's see, we've got this guy here, we'll set that aside. That one here, that one there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bracket off for this harness connector right here. Let's see, connector, connector. So the little tab that locks the connector in is already disengaged. So someone forgot to do that. Previous mechanic ruins Jeep. You've gotta pinch this connector here and here and then slide this collar back, there we go. That's how that works. Okay, and that's out of the way. Two more tens right below us. That will disconnect the bracket. There we go, bracket removed. Okay, I believe I get, or I have access to all the fasteners for this uh, upper intake. Let's go ahead and start cracking this thing loose. Up and away, there we go. Okay, foam insulating pad over here on this valve cover, let's pull that out of the way. So we've got these uh, PCV hoses hanging out here. Let's disconnect, let's disconnect. Let's disconnect. These guys, that's the transmission vent, I think. That's the driver's side PCV, and then this one, that's gonna be passenger side. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. 
All right, let's go ahead. Cause I can't see much with that upper intake off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lower out of here. And we're just gonna take a gander at what it looks like. So I'm gonna pull these uh, coil connections off. Please come off coils. There we go. The reason I'm disconnecting the coils is I need to get this harness out of the way so I can take off this lower. Pop the fuel injector connectors. The connector retainer is loose, rather. It's a two-stage connector. There's a little red piece that clips it all together. And then once you pull the red piece, you can reach the tab to uh, pull the injector. And then this one in the back, I can't even see that one. That's missing the red tab. It makes this easier, kind of. Yeah, someone's, I think someone just did this job on this, uh, this lower manifold business. But we're so close to being able to reinspect that I need to go in there and find out if exactly what's causing all this oil. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pull the fuel line. It seems to be all that's left on this side. It's gonna give us a bit of a fuel spray here, but it'll be all right. Come on, fuel line. You've just been removed recently, haven't you? out of the way some more good so there's only one fuel line there's two fuel rails one on either side here and here but the line is connected or the rails are connected with this line here so there's only one fuel line anyway we've got one two three four probably eight more eight millimeter and that's gonna pop out this lower manifold so let's get these guys broken loose Hello, darling. Hello. What's up? I have your you brought coffee? I love it when you bring coffee. Coffee's great. I'm here for my mandatory... Uh... Your mandatory appearance? Yes. Hang on a second. Okay, you're busy. Um, well, it's not that I'm busy. You don't, don't put yourself second in nature to me here. Here, let's set that down. Go take a quick coffee break. Hello, darling. Hello. We were all waiting for right. you, especially well, for the coffee. coffee. Thank you. Hi, Hi. bye. Yeah. Enter. Are you Hi. nervous? You yeah. nervous? Don't go anywhere. Go away. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> so, we have our lower manifold, and I can't really tell how long these gaskets have been here. They these could be the originals. I'm not sure if they come blue or not. But here's a couple things I don't like. It's not the end of the world, but this bolt hole was missed once upon a time and the threads started digging in over here. So that's all nice and chowdered up a little bit. That one's a little chewed up. I mean, they, they are plastic threads and everything. This one's starting to crack right here. See that? There's a little crack right there in that one. Yeah, not exactly the greatest. I'm sure it's fine and it'll work, but it's just testament to uh, previous work quality. Anyway, this is what we're looking for. What we're looking for here is this lower cooler assembly. Now this appears to be a brand new cooler and the owner of said vehicle thinks it's a brand new cooler or they said it probably is a brand new cooler or it is, but I'm also seeing a bunch of oil pooling up under this manifold and there's a bunch of oil pooling up on top of this manifold. Look right here. Something fell. Yeah, that's oil right there. And that's actually clean looking oil on the top of this unit. So I believe that this manifold is leaking, even though it's new. And look at down there, there's a bunch of oil at the bottom of the valley too. You can see it pretty clearly next to that hose right down there. See that? 
Yeah, there's oil all over the place in this thing. Okay. Okay, teardown continues. I am gonna recommend replacing this oil cooler assembly with the aluminum one, but now we need to keep going and see what kind of condition these valve cover gaskets are in. I got a feeling this entire job is someone else's redo. Oh look, it appears that uh, Chrysler has employed engineers from Saab or Volvo. They've got a backwards alternator setup. That's fun. Oh yeah. Hmm. What is this? No gasket in there. Yeah, look at here. That's fresh RTV. Someone came in here before, took this apart for some reason, and then reused the old gaskets, I think. And I mean, I guess that's okay, but these are kind of super spongy. I don't like them. All right, while I'm here, let me get, uh, let me pull a spark plug out and just see what they're looking like. Just to find out what we're working with here, because now we have no absolutes. It's things that are not exactly done to perfection. Champions! We have champion plugs in here. Um, this thing's like all the bad signs. I'm not, I'm not putting this in. I disagree with champion plugs. They're just, yeah, yeah, free, but it's a Chrysler and that's what goes in there. And I'm like, yeah, not gonna do it. We're just, just not gonna do it. Okay, so we've got one side disassembled. Let's go pull this other side off. I think I'm gonna have to pull the battery uh, and this battery tray business right here in order to get to the bolts on this cover. I'm not so certain, but I think that's what I need to do. And I also think I'm going to have to go ahead and disconnect these heater core hoses. So since this cooler is going to come out, I know that this coolant hose has to be connected, which is connected down here to the water pump. So I think I'll just drain this cooling system down here at this hose. That way, the line that I know I need to have empty will be empty and I won't have to spill coolant everywhere. Come on, clamp. Yeah, it's bothering me. There we go. Give that kind of a bit of a twist here. Break it free. I've got a drain bucket down below this line right here, so we're all good on the spillage. There we go. Let it ride. Perfect. Okay, lifting this up, Gravitas will take the remaining coolant and send it down into the engine stay. And that'll just drain out right there into the bucket. Good, so now let's go ahead and get these three coils off of here and then we can, I'm gonna try to pull this cover off without taking the battery box out of there. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I can't, but we'll see. But yeah, that's next.
pull's gone, valve cover off. Okay, 10 mil. Yeah, and I did go through and disconnect all these when you guys weren't looking. It's kind of a big job, even though it doesn't look like it. And it takes quite a bit of time, and I'm trying to save us some viewing time by cutting out the things that are just uh, only mildly entertaining and not severely entertaining. There we go. Okay. You lose. And we shall not forget this cam position sensor back here. The one with the Torx bit. Come out. What are we doing? Let's go ahead and get a pry driver under here and kind of crack this thing up and away. Maybe. Up front here is where it's uh, RTV silicone sealant it in. Here's where it's stuck out back too. Is it glued on? Who are we stuck on here? Hmm, I'm confused. All right, I figured out what's happening back there. There is a, like a PCV elbow that comes out of the back of the valve cover. And that elbow must be disconnected in order to get the cover to come free from the camshaft. I have to unbolt that elbow from the back of the cover. But I can't reach the bolts because this battery tray is here, so now I must remove said battery tray in order to get the one bolt out for the one PCV fitting. And then I get the cover off. That's why the labor guide said that this cover was like two and a half hours. Now I see what we're doing here. It really is gonna take two and a half hours worth of, of effort. Come here, battery. Oh. 
So yep, look here, a bunch more bolts, and they all have witness marks on them. These nuts right here. Keep these nuts, these ones. I have to disconnect everything. This is this is getting real fun real quick. I just need to go back through there just to get a hold of one screw. One single screw. Good job, Stellantis. Thanks guys. I don't know if y'all could have made this any harder work on. I mean, seriously, you guys should get like an award for this. Oh yeah, you've been JD Power awarded all kinds of stuff in the past for for your uh, innovative creations and breakthrough engineering techniques, you know, because you switched to plastic instead of metal, things like that. JD Power, good job. I'm now removing the fuse box. You know why I'm removing the fuse box? Because I have to take the PCB system apart. And we always have to remove the fuse box uh, when servicing the emission system. Always. Well, I've come this far. Might as well keep on going. There's one. What do we got? One more in there. There we go. Got it. Look at that. Oh, no, not yet. There's still another one. There's a connector connected to the floor of this plastic thing for no reason. Here it comes. Here comes the giant battery tray. This completely necessary hunk of plastic. Yes. All because of one fastener. There it is, look at that, that's, that's fantastic. Look, I now I can see the engine, yay. So let's get back to that one bolt that I need to get back to, which is, I mean, it's down here somewhere. Now let's take the wiring harness off to that. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It's, uh, it's right here. That is where it is located, right there. There's the PCV elbow, and the bolt that I need is right here. That was wonderful. I bet some of you were scoffing at that 2.5 hour labor estimate or whatever that I mentioned that the uh, the book calls for for this one side and this cover. Didn't you? I still can't even see that, that bolt back there. I know it's there. I can't see it. I can barely feel it. But it's not even tight. Yeah, that thing's not even tight. What is this? Yeah, it's not even tight. That was that was great. All that for a, a loose fastener. Yeah, this is what I needed to get. This little PCV thing right here. This business, which was also leaking everywhere okay okay moment of truth is it gonna come out now probably yeah it's off we're good here she comes there it is that's the uh the one in question and look at this gasket here 
super duper flat, different color, probably has not been changed, I don't think, or they reused one of the old ones and put this one back in. Uh, either way, we have found the source of the leaks. This is good. Okay, so the hard part's done. Let's go ahead and dig out this oil cooler from the valley between the cylinder heads here. So I'm gonna throw some towels over the cams to keep debris from falling down into the engines. We'll do both sides and then we'll unbolt this cooler assembly and pull it up out of the valley here. Okay, we have a couple connectors to disconnect. Brand new ones too, because this thing, like I said, was just replaced. But it's a leaking and I don't like it. I wonder if they just got the torque wrong and warped the housing. That one wasn't even tight, see that? but it's also leaking at the top. I, I was I was changing my mind in my head just now, thinking maybe this is just not tight enough. But there's oil on the top. Perhaps the cooler is leaking against the housing. Couple more back here. More here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get a hold of this thing, wiggle it up and out. Yeah, look at that, that's too much oil down there. That's not, this is not okay. Something's wrong with whatever this plastic business is here. That's our sensor, and we've got one hose connection here to uh, contend with. And then we're gonna Kind of give this a little bit of a closer in-depth look. Let's see if we can't figure out why it's leaking. So what I need is some pliers on this clamp. That clamp's awfully sideways. I hope the guy that owns this didn't change this because I've kind of been making fun of this the whole time and I'm gonna feel bad if I've been making fun of my customer. Building some coolant. All right, so we are now free. All right, so over here on the bench, taking a look at our uh, our O-rings. I can't really tell if these are in horrible shape or not. This one, this one is out of shape right here. See that one? That one's not looking good. This one is deformed right here. Okay, but those I believe here and here. Those should be coolant. Yeah, those are coolant O-rings, but we had an oil leaking problem. So the oil on this is gonna be this O-ring, and of course the ones up top inside of the cooler. So let's just pluck this cooler off real fast and see how the O-rings look inside of that cooler. Couple torques here. These aren't super tight. I do hear a reverse click from the from the gun, but these don't feel the greatest. Let's pry this off of here. And these are the O-rings for the cooler. Those are gonna sit down inside of the plastic here. Yeah, they're not terrible. That one's kind of deformed. I think we're uh, I think we're making the right move here, replacing this cooler assembly. This is the, uh, the problematic plastic oil filter housing, and we're gonna go ahead and change this out with the aluminum aftermarket one that's designed to correct this uh, exact flaw right here. So, guys. All that being said, what we need to do next is clean out this valley. I need to go ahead and order the new cooler assembly, get that thing into position, and then uh, we'll get the valve covers back on. However, due to the length of this video, I'm going to have to reserve that for the part two. 
This is uh, clearly the teardown version, part one. Parts are gonna be ordered. When they arrive, we will begin part two shortly afterwards. So having said all that, I have nothing more to offer you on this particular Jeep other than a thank you for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a Jeep, end of Chrysler Pentastar, end of oil leaking, end of day, end of video, end of transmission.